So in this video, we're going to discuss about the mechanism of HCL secretion in the stomach. Okay. This has been asked previously in many universities, like it has been asked as a long essay, a short essay, as well as as a diagram question. So we'll just see an example of the long essay that was asked. List the cells and secretions of the oxygen glands of stomach. With the help of a diagram, explain the mechanism of gastric acid secretion. Explain the phases of gastric acid secretion. Now, as a short essay, it has been asked to describe the phases and how was it regulated and as a draw and label question also. So in this video, we'll be primarily focusing on the mechanism of gastric acid secretion. We'll discuss the phases and regulation in another video. So in the introduction, we have to write about the physiological anatomy. So here in this case, we know the gastric secretion is produced from the stomach. It's especially produced from the tubular glands of the stomach. Okay. So there are two or three type, important types of glands that are present. One is the cardiac glands, oxygenic glands and the pylodic glands. So see if this is an outline of the stomach here we know this is the fundus and if it's got a body and it's got a pylorus. So the cardiac glands are produced are present near the lower esophageal sphincter. But this is uh, the cardiac glands are not mentioned much in many international books but still I'm mentioning it. Next we've got the oxygenic glands which are mainly present in the fundus as well as the body and it is this is the oxygenic glands produced are HCL and we've got the pyloric glands which are present in the pyloric region. Now one major difference of the glands that are present in the pyloric region are that they have more G cells which produce gastrin. Okay. So this is the physiological anatomy. Next we'll move on to the types of cells of the oxygenic glands. Okay. So uh, it's mainly got the surface mucus cells. So suppose this is the uh, section showing the oxygenic glands. So you can see that on the surface we've got the surface mucus cells and obviously surface mucus cells will produce mucus which will protect the uh, stomach from HCL. And the second type of cells are the mucus neck cells. See the mucus neck cells also produce mucus. Okay. So now if you're wondering why there should be so much cells producing the mucus that is because it has to form the mucosal barrier which will protect the mucosa from that high acidity which is produced by the HCL. Okay. So surface mucus cells and mucus neck cells will produce mucus. Next we've got the parietal cells or the oxyntic cells. Now it is the parietal cells that secrete HCL as well as the intrinsic factor of calcium. So intrinsic factor of calcium is important because it is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. Next We've got enterochromaffin-like cells or the ECL cells that secrete histamine. And finally, we've got the peptic cells which secrete the enzyme pepsinogen which is highly proteolytic. Right? So these are the different cells that are present in the oxygenic glands. Next, we'll see the mechanism of secretion of hydrochloric acid. So suppose this is the outline of the parietal cell that produce HCL. The first step is that carbon dioxide from the blood will enter the parietal cell. So see this is a parietal cell and here we've got the lumen. So this is the lumen into which the HCL will be produced. So the first step is our carbon dioxide will enter the parietal cell and it combines with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase 2 to form H plus and bicarbonate. Okay. So the first step is carbon dioxide will enter the parietal cell and in the presence of uh, carbonic anhydrase 2 it will split into H plus and bicarbonate. Now this H plus will be secreted out via the pump which is known as a H plus K plus ATP. So this is the H plus K plus ATP which is an exchanger which will pump out the H plus into the lumen. Right. And then what will happen to the bicarbonate? This again is pumped into the or absorbed into the bloodstream by a chloride bicarbonate exchanger. So of this H plus and bicarbonate H plus is pumped into the lumen and bicarbonate is absorbed into the bloodstream. Okay, and then the chloride, chloride that enters the cell will move out into the lumen through the chloride channel. So see now we've got both H plus and Cl minus and thereby we've got our acid present in the lumen. Okay, now on the parietal cell we've also got the sodium potassium ATPs pump which is needed for energy. But then here's a problem. See you've got potassium entering the cell in two ways. So it, we need the potassium to go out of the cell 
and thus we've got these potassium channels that are present here okay so this will maintain the uh, amount of potassium that is needed for this h plus k plus atp is pump to work okay so that's how this uh, hcl is produced so see this is a resting parietal cell so you can see that there are a lot of canalicla and all that so in this resting parietal cell all this h plus k plus atp is this pump is in a resting state see but once it is time for the parietal cell to produce uh, hcl what happens is this just changes its shape see you can see that all the canalicla have been deepened and this h plus k plus atp is that pump will be present on its surface membrane right see initially it was in a resting state in, in in these vesicles now it is pushed out into this membrane okay so this is how the parietal cell produces hcl okay so see this is the tubular vesicular system that is present for the parietal cell and this is the intracellular canalicular system okay so so now we'll see the factors affecting hcl secretion so see if suppose this is a parietal cell see there are factors that can stimulate as well as inhibit the secretion of hcl okay so we'll see what are the factors that stimulates hcl secretion so first and foremost we've got vagal stimulation other factor that stimulates is histamine and other is gastrin so how do these increase the hcl secretion see when vagus is stimulated it produces acetylcholine this in turn will act on the m3 receptor which is present on the parietal cell and thereby it causes increase in activity of the parietal cell similarly histamine as well as gastr gastrin they act on the parietal cell and produce and stimulates it to produce more hcl now the factors that inhibit the parietal cells are prostaglandin e2 okay so if prostaglandin e2 is present that will inhibit the gastric secretion and we've also got somatostatin which again inhibits the parietal cell secretion so these are the in, in a nutshell the factors that stimulate as well as inhibit the parietal acid secretion next we'll just quickly see the functions of the gastric secretion see we know gastric secretion contains pepsin right so when the pepsinogen is activated it cleaves pepsinogen to pepsin which in turn is a very pro, a strong proteolytic enzyme and then because hcl is present we've got protection against the invading foreign organisms that enter via the gastrointestinal tract that is why we say the gastric acid that is present in the stomach is a part of our innate immunity now for iron absorption also we need hcl because for the conversion of ferric to ferrous as well as for the absorption of iron we need that acidic environment which is produced by hcl finally it stimulates the bile as well as pancreatic juice secretion okay so these are the functions of the gastric acid secretion now for some applied aspects you can write about the postprandial alkaline tide so what is postprandial alkaline tide see after a meal what happens there is stimulation of hcl production right but we have to remember that for each h plus that is produced the bicarbonate is being absorbed into the blood so what will happen after a meal there is more hcl that is produced so naturally our blood will be more alkaline so that is what is called postprandial alkaline tide okay next is why vomiting produces hypokalemia vomiting produces hypokalemia because when there is vomiting the along with uh, h plus and hcl minus we also we are also losing k plus that is potassium thus it will produce hypokalemia next again peptic ulcer disease so we know that if our hcl production is more it can affect our mucus barrier and thereby it can produce ulcer which is called peptic ulcer disease okay and there are many uh, drugs that can in induce this peptic ulcer disease which i think we'll discuss later so in a nutshell if a question on the mechanism of hcl secretion is asked we have to first start off with the physiological anatomy and draw the different cells that are present in the oxyntic glands then you can write about the mechanism as well as draw the draw the diagrams of what happens in a parietal cell you can write about the functions of the gastric acid secretion as well as the factors affecting and then you can write some applied aspects so i think the concept is clear thank you